Okay, everybody, um, I decided to do a video on how to overclock your Intel Core i7-920 processor, normally a 2.66 gigahertz processor. There's so much misinformation on the internet, it was making my head spin, and I'm trying to do this to help people so that they won't have to dig through a ton of information to try and get their Intel i7 to work at a higher uh, operating frequency. Um, the first thing to note, uh, I think, was a very important aspect was that uh, there's a lot of misinformation in regards to temperature of the CPU and how much temperature it can handle. Uh, I would like to let you guys know that I've actually really stress test this thing and to put things really quickly and easily, um, what people are saying about 47 degrees being just way too hot you know for idle temperatures and you know I need to do you need to have it uh, some crazy cooler to keep your uh, CPU cool and blah 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 that's a bunch of bullshit okay because these core i7s uh, they have safety features which keep the, that problem at bay and you don't have to do anything really uh, case in point a hardware monitor I have a smart fan setting and let's see here, I think the lowest I can get out of the smart fan setting is 40 degrees and then it's disabled. So 40 degrees is actually a very low idle temperature for properly operating Intel i7. Um, when you're overclocking, overclocking temperatures can get as high as 100 degrees without any worry of the CPU dying. Uh, and the reason I say that is because right here you got bias features, uh, CPU feature set, and you have this overspeed protection. What that overspeed protection does is as soon as you get to 100 degrees, the CPU will automatically throttle back its megahertz in order to keep the temperature at 100 degrees or less. So there is a self-preservation mode in 100 degrees. I've run it reliably and I've actually pushed the CPU as hard as I could and as soon as you hit to 100 degrees it'll actually uh, hit that point and you can actually watch if you have any kind of monitoring utility that it will basically throttle back the CPU and you'll see uh, the temperature start being lowered so I wouldn't worry about that too much um, if you want to make sure that everything's on the up and up then um, you can get a monitoring utility and what I would recommend is throttle stop. It actually lets you change a lot of these settings internal uh, to your CMOS right within Windows so you can do all your testing there. And um, I think I used Intel Burn in test and Prime95 to do the actual verification of the overclocks. Um, as far as all these other settings go people, I get away with C1E support and what that does is it lowers voltage when your CPU hits an idle state, I would recommend that you turn this off to start with. And then if you want to try and save a few watts uh, while like, your computer goes into idle, try enabling that, leave it overnight uh, while it's on and come back. And if it's still running, then your CPU voltage um, lowering on the C1E support will be fine. Uh, Overspeed protection, obviously I would keep that enabled and hyper threading obviously you want that as well um the rest i can't remember but they have nothing to do with overclocking um another let's see if there's anything i missed here um the most important parts i'll get to right now <clears throat> in the menu i have intel speed step this is enhanced intel speed step and what this does is basically it drops the frequency of the processor when it's in idle. And as soon as it gets an intense load, it throttles up. Um, I've had good luck with it while I'm overclocking. I haven't had any issues. So I would say if you're trying to save some power, again, use this. If uh, you're not trying to save some power, then by all means disable this and keep it locked in at the frequency that you're trying to... Uh, achieve. Uh, Intel C state tech, uh, I disabled this and basically it's an enhancement, uh, different, it's increasing levels to that C1E tech and I would say by all means this has to be disabled in order to get any kind of uh, stable overclocking and um, 
what I mean by stable overclocking is that the voltage levels will drop too much and basically you're going to have to bump up those voltage levels on the processor and various components in order to um, in order to get the system stable so base clock uh, you can see here that what I'm uh, oh and one other thing people Intel uh, Turbo Boost after about 3.2 3.3 gigahertz I would disable your uh, Turbo Boost and just leave it at that um, I'm doing a 3.6 gigahertz at the moment I've been playing with the 3.8 gigahertz as well uh, and I would say both work fine. The only reason I am not using 3.8 is because what ends up happening um, is that uh, uh, at 3.8 gigahertz, it's using a lot more energy than it is at 3.6. I think I from 3.2 to 3.6, I'm using 7% more power input into the processor. When I jump to 3.8, I'm using something like 28% more power than um, than I am at 3.2 gigahertz so I would say definitely as far as performance versus power uh, the best point for the Intel uh, i7 920 is 3.6 gigahertz uh, anything after that you're using a lot more energy for diminishing improvement uh, in the uh, CPU performance so uh, again on to the base clock I've got 180 megahertz here, and 180 megahertz gives me three uh, 3600 uh, adjusted core frequency, and that's going to give me what I need for um, for my actual um, level of performance. Um, now, notice here that uh, when I enable <coughs> the Intel Speed Step, Intel Speed Step automatically and dynamically will adjust based on your base clock. So when I disable this, I have a multiplier here, which is uh, the CPU ratio. And when I change that CPU ratio, it changes the frequency of the processor. So at 20, this would be the theoretical max. 21 is forcing it over, but that um, doesn't seem to work on my motherboard. So uh, at 20, that's the theoretical max, and when I enable speed step, what it does is it will adjust the th CPU ratio to alter that frequency. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it uh, um, enabled, but basically you're going to be able to uh, get that frequency that you're looking for and try and adjust accordingly based on your needs. Uh, I'm going to do that, I'm going to disable the speed tech, and what... The biggest thing as far as overclocking people I have found is this right here, is the uncore ratio and the memory ratio. Now, I have a set of, um, I actually have four Mushkin DDR2000 uh, sticks, and basically I find that that was overkill. I should have never went to 2000 megahertz because basically this motherboard will never be able to support that kind of uh, frequency on those memory sticks. Now, I know 100% that I can run uh, my memory ratio at 1600 megahertz. And this is because for the last four years, I've been running them at 1600 megahertz at 3.2 gigahertz uh, clock speed. So that entire time I've been running 1600 and my Uncore ratio, basically, let me see here if I can change this for you. So, for example, your Encore is twice your adjusted memory ratio. Now, the problem I came into here is that 1600 is great at um, 3.2 gigahertz, but 1600 at 3.6 or 3.8 just wouldn't cut it for some reason. And the interesting thing was I started to think that this was all heat-related because basically when you're overclocking your CPU, you're also increasing the amount of calculations that you can do. So you're also stress testing your memory controller, your North Bridge, and all that other stuff. So what I did was I went into the BIOS and I went back here and let's see here, I went to, uh, 
hardware monitor and I pumped up my system fan one which is the fan for the north bridge and basically put that to 100% and the fan that I put on there is quite noisy but it pushes a lot of air and when I put it to 100% I could set my Uncore uh, ratio to 3200 and basically my adjusted memory would be 1600 which is half and I would have no problems at all. So most of the problems I had with any kind of overclock had to do with the heat, I believe, of the North Bridge and how much it was able to, you know, um, process that extra, those extra calculations because you're pushing a lot of data and you're basically um, really stressing that Uncore. So what I've done here is I'm okay at 3.6, 14.4 using the same fan, uh, keep the system quiet, and I have no problems at all. Now if I wanted to go, I basically could run 3.8 gigahertz, 1600 megahertz uh, memory ratio with a 3600, um, or sorry, 3200 uncore ratio and have no problems at all, but I have to turn the fan to max, which starts to get things a little bit noisy. So that was the primary problem I had was the memory. It wasn't the processor at all. Um, I could be quite flexible at seeing like with the processor voltages and have no problems. Um, for all this other stuff, people, I would leave alone PCI bus. Um, and you can see here, I jumped the voltage level up to 1.272, uh, PLL voltage 1.8, QPI voltage 1.27, and RAM uh, 1.6. I put it on 1.6, but to be quite honest with you guys, um, you don't have to change that at all. I basically look at the memory and basically go uh, based on your best um, assumption. For example, I've got DDR2000, so I can run, get away with stock voltage. Uh, I had this on auto, and basically it worked just as well as 1.6. Um, I put it on 1.6 for reliability reasons, and I know the DDR3 can handle 1.6 without any issues, so I put it on there just to increase stability. Um, I haven't had any issues with either, but just because I've done most of my baselines and tests at 1.6, I'm going to leave it there. And basically, that's it, people. Um, your voltage is going to go up based on how much uh, uh, your frequency is. Let's see here. For my CPU voltage, I registered a 1.34, 1.35 for that area. And the QPI would be 1.34, 1.35 as well in that area uh, and basically my DRAM voltage stayed the same and your, your DRAM voltage the biggest thing to look at is right here um, just as a note as well um, the higher frequencies you've got the more energy you're going to use so I've actually found when I went to a thousand megahertz on my DRAM that my power consumption went down quite a bit um, so you know, that's something to play with, too, if you want to do that. Um, other than that, um, one other thing is that, of course, you know, is if you have a DDR1000 or 1200, then obviously you're not going to be able to get away with a 1400 megahertz clock frequency on the DRAM, and you're going to have to bump up that DRAM voltage. So uh, keep that in mind, and um, let's see here. If there's anything else I missed, I don't think so. But yeah, I, um, oh, spread spectrum, definitely you want that disabled. Um, and yeah, basically that's it, people. Um, the biggest thing, like I said, for me personally was this memory core ratio to uncore ratio. When you start stressing that uncore, uh, you're basically going to get into all sorts of issues. And that seems to be <clears throat> the biggest headache. If uh, you're having a problem, make sure you keep your DRAM um, voltage where you know it's happy or, and your DRAM uh, frequency where it's happy and go from there. Um, good luck, everybody. Take care. Hope this helps. Bye-bye.